previously on Reversed. This really happens and it's real, it's painful. The wound's been looking okay, but I'm a little concerned about it. I've had so many negative experiences where people made fun of me. My name is Charles. I made my name known as a celebrity chef and award-winning filmmaker. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It would set me on a journey to not only try and save my life, but ones I would come to meet around the world. It does not take much effort to live for others, and what we leave is how we will be remembered. I will embark on a road to help reverse the lives of some that are fighting this terrible condition. I hope at the end, we can see that hope is a great thing and the start of a better future. Welcome to Reversed. We had a long day in front of us as we were headed to the campground to learn about the Jamaican Maroons. The guests wanted to start the day off with some exercise before we left. I was excited to see them making this part of their day today. All right, good morning. Good How are we morning. feeling today? Feeling wonderful. Feeling wonderful? So we're gonna pick up today and do a little bit of what we did last week, and then we're gonna progress and do a little bit more. Um, and I'm so excited that we have Roger here with us today. So he's going to be joining in the workout. I'm very proud that he's here. All right, so like we talked about last time, this is a pop quiz. What's the first part before you work out? What do you do? Warm up. Warm up. What's it called? Warm up. <laughs> movement, movement prep. Remember we talked about movement prep. Right. Okay. And what's the purpose of movement prep? I really want you guys to understand this so you can remember this for your workouts. It opens your pockets get ready for exercise right because it tells your, your nervous system to talk to your muscles and it gets it ready for whatever exercise you're going to do okay instead of just jumping in and, and working your muscles you get your nervous system ready to do that i think in general like just the whole energy and vibe of everybody even the, in the whole house is really changing and i'm starting to feel a really positive energy and a positive vibe and this this energy that they really want to improve and they want to do better you know they're really open they're asking questions um, they're asking for more. They like the sweat now. They like the burn. Like I feel like in my second workout They were really more engaged and they wanted to be pushed like the other day Margie was telling me that you know She felt sore and that made her feel really accomplished So we talked about that and that was a really good sign that she liked that feeling so overall overall I think it's going really well so We're gonna revisit the same prep that we did the other day So if you remember the first thing that we did was the toe touches, right? This is a very very basic one, but it's good for any fitness level just to start so we're gonna just go through a couple of different toe touching exercises, okay? So you're gonna go in the front, bring your foot back, side, bring your foot back, and then switch, front, if you're able to, if you can't just do the same leg, front, side. So let's just go through a couple repetitions of these, and if you wanna just pick maybe two or three different movement prep exercises and do about 10 reps each, that's a good start for your warm-up, okay? Our exercise fitness guru, loving. That's what I would think of her as a loving person. She wasn't there just to flaunt how incredibly awesome her body was, but to look at me and be on the opposite end of the scale, she had compassion for me, and she didn't make me feel like I was the big person. She encouraged me as I continued to raise those cans of beans or use my cane to work out. She was so encouraging and loving and I'm excited that I've met her. Um, these are things that I will continue to use to help me develop into the better person. And last one. All right, you guys did awesome today. Oh my goodness, that was a good session. Give me some knocks on that one. Knocks, knocks. This is what I do with my kids. Knocks. Knocks. Oh, you did the blow. I do the blow. Feeling better physically and mentally. Finally, starting to enjoy this place. <laughs> Got to get out a little bit yesterday. It was enjoyable. Went to a fruit stand. I tried out some uh, some of the local fruit around here, which was. Very awesome, I've never tried before. Things are really looking up, and it seems like uh, this stuff is really working. <laughs> when I was a freshman in college, um, people connect. We all had one thing in common. We were all in band. So 
there's like a family bond there. And Kevin kept hanging around with us and then we all were always together. And one night we were all going, we all went out for pizza and we were coming back out of the door and there was somebody apparently who had been drinking was sprawled out all over the sidewalk. And as we were going out the door, Kevin stumbled over him. And we all ran. And he was just standing there. And then this guy was like, you wanna mess with me, you wanna mess with me. And finally, I ran over and I grabbed him and went, you know, pulled him along. And then I, I would play bad tricks on him, like letting him walk into things, like into a pylon and stumbling. When I knew it was there, I just wanted to see the reaction. I'm being very, very insensitive. And it breaks my heart now to realize what he was going through because he was night blind. Basically, I'm really night blind. I don't see cars in the road. But I, I feel horrible now, 35 years plus ago. I feel bad that I let him go through that. I don't want people to feel sorry for me, but on the same token, I, I don't think that you should feel, you know, um, bad for, for the situation that you're explaining about because you didn't know. Now you understand. Yeah, I understand. Now, you understand. now I know what he felt like when I was teasing around and let him stumble. And, and uh, good Lord, if Kevin, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And it has taught me to be more sensitive to other people. Way more sensitive. I'm really seeing the changes um, in our guests, particularly from the first few days when they arrived. It was a lot of uncertainty, fear, anxiety that was showing, and a, and a lot of emotions running wild um, on all different levels. And I think now we're really seeing a sense of calm, uh, a sense of healing. Uh, to the extent that several of them are talking about becoming diabetes ambassadors. Now we're going to be helping people. The people that are going to see, they're going to know exactly what we're going through. And the compassion, the understanding, we're going to be able to give this to people. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what, I am so glad that I'm a part of this because we're able to help the, the patients and we're, all, we're also able to help the people that are around it that are going to be able to help them. We need to educate others that when we're in a in a one of those electric carts at the store don't automatically assume we're doing it because we're lazy or we're fat or you know you're just taking away somebody's cart you look just fine you know when i would i guess more than anything when i wore my i wear sundresses a lot and it would cover my leg so then people would automatically assume, oh, she's just too lazy. But I've grown a lot. How about you guys? Of course, of course. And it's always good that you can share, you know? It's always good that you can share. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning it's not good to just hold it in. No. you got to share within moderation so you don't sound like you're all grumpy, but sometimes we just think that. <sighs> Let it out. Now we stop. My, my ocean breath. <sighs> yeah, it really makes a difference. Coming up on Reversed. Roger had an, an incident. Today what we're doing is really all about the guest. So, um, Roger had an, uh, an incident, if you'd like to call it, the other day with Dr. Asa. You don't feel yeah, like you're treated. Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. you I, are. I, I feel you're... like I'm being treated different. Yeah, but you're not. Because and I... you're not freaking handicapped. And uh, I know Dr. Asa means well. Um, I'm just kind of curious and thinking that maybe the tough love with, with Roger might be a little, little too much right now, in only a couple of days. I wanted to kind of go and just talk to him and see you know, how he's doing, encourage him, let him know that Roger has made 
unbelievable changes since here. I mean, in only a few days, this man has done what most of us can't do. Um, so I'm going to talk to him right now. Roger. How you doing, brother? Hey, man. How you doing? Good, good. Ah, oh, beautiful day out here today. It man. is. That's, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I've known you guys for a couple of years, and um, I really thank you for being here. I mean, because, you know, when I called Lisa, like I said, I mean, when she said you guys would do it, and I know she has to, of course, talk to you too as well, but for you agreeing, that meant a lot for me. Um, you've always been kind and, and sweet and gentle to me. Um, you know, I know you had a conversation out here the other day with Dr. Ake, so. Yes. Um, I saw some of the footage. I, you have done amazing. And I don't want anyone to push you or, or you to feel like um, this is a tough love session. You've done, you've done what a lot of people can't do. And I know that about you. I know I saw you when you were fit and big and, 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 and <laughs> big old redneck, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> you know, so I yeah. know, I know, I know what you're dealing with is, is probably a lot. And you're doing an amazing job. I'm here for you. We're all here for you. Nobody thinks any less of you in any kind of way. I don't even look at that thing. And I know it, 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 you know, dealing with some of the things that you've dealt with as far as the people coming into the room and so on and so forth, you know, it can be a little tough. Um, but, you know, we're here for, we're here to, to nurture, to build, to uplift. And, and it's working. <laughs> and, and exactly. And you might have had a, a rough day the other day. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure and just, you know, I, I'm hoping he wasn't too hard on you and, and maybe... I don't want you to change if you want to. He was just hard enough. Yeah. That's what I needed. Good. Good. Yeah, sometimes we need to be told some stuff and Yeah. Good. Want to realize that. Yeah. So it, it you you were right with it or Oh yeah. Okay. And it's fine. Good. And we're we're okay together. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, I know you even I could see you guys, you and Lisa even getting a little bit closer. You know, what do you what do you think about that? Enjoyed it. <clears throat> Enjoying it a lot. Yeah. A lot better. It's, yeah. been, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm proud of you, man. I really, I mean that from the heart. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, thank you. a lot of these people don't know you like I know you guys, you know what I'm saying? But I'm proud mm -hmm. of you from the heart, man. And um, I'm just, uh, I hope that, you know, when you get back that you guys just keep this up. Let's keep this positive look, and, and by the time this show is over, I want you guys to to really have change mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Right. Yeah. So, all right. We're that's back. what we're that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, let's get back in here. Come on. Coming up on reversed. Sister Nice is an older resident in Tango River. I got to spend time with nature. Today, what we're doing is really all about the guest. Today, we were all headed to the campground. I have been there before, and I knew the guests were in for a treat. A nice long ride, and Richard being our tour guide. Richard is the owner of the campground. He has a real passion for finding natural ways to help people with conditions. It was a joy traveling and allowing everyone to understand another side of Jamaica. So basically, um, England used Jamaica as a place of growth. Uh, all the natural resources were exploited here. Um, we're heading up into the cockpit country. Uh, it's called cockpit country because the area is very hilly. It has quite a bit of um, quite a bit of valleys. The reason why the name is considered is called cockpit country because cockpit is a name given to uh, if you look at a, a egg tray box when you hold an egg tray uh, upside down you have a lot of different ridges, hills, and valleys. And so when you look at this region by an airplane, it looks similar to an upside down egg tray. I got to spend time with nature and it actually brought my mind at ease and for the love of this country, Jamaica.
because of, because the fertility of this area, is, um, uh, there's a lot of different plants that grow here. As you can see, the it, it's a the area the foliage is very green, very lush. You can just about plant anything here. Uh, most of the plants that you're looking at are mostly fruit bearing trees or medicinal trees. This area of Jamaica is considered the area in the world that has the most endemic plant species. Uh, not only has most endemic plant species in the world, but it has more than half the world's medicinal plants. Now what's important about these plants is that more than half of these plants are bioactive. And these are the plants that's known and already used by local people. Uh, culturally, Jamaicans would prefer and most uh, still do, when they're sick, they'll go out into the yard and they'll go and find some uh, plant and use it to, to uh, cure the various illnesses uh, that they have. As we go up, I'll also show you a few of these medicinal plants, uh, some of which have been used to cure cancer by our local scientists. Some have been used to treat diabetes, uh, and some also have been used uh, to treat the common cold. Uh, if you would take a plant from Jamaica and plant it in the same environment in another country, you would never get the same nutritional benefits. Uh, and that's due because of the soil contents here in Jamaica is, is very different. So the, 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 the plants will produce a very, um, you know, unique uh, nutritional values. So in another maybe five minutes or so, we should be at our destination. Uh, Camp Millbrook is a work in progress. It's still not there where we want it to be, but hopefully this will be home to our science history museum. This will be a home for a reenactment of a war between the Maroons and the slave. Uh, this will also be the home for a biotech center where we'll utilize uh, straight. We we'll utilize the natural resources that we have here to make nutraceuticals and other medicines to preserve life and of course our wellness center. So people can come up here in the hills and de-stress, relax, enjoy some of these organic plants that we have here and just, you know, try to heal. Uh, obviously, you have a noni tree here, all right, another apple tree here. Would you like to taste one of these apples? Yes. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, baby, so being able to pick apples on the side of the road is something many should experience at least one time when they visit Jamaica. It's sort of like an apple pear, and it tastes amazing. So this is how, this is local people junk food in Jamaica. They just eat it right off the tree. You can eat it right off the tree, right? Right off the tree. That's Jamaican apple, very tasty right? and very nutritious. It's amazing. Coming up on Reversed. So that's what makes this country unique. Life is, is, is worth fighting for, I tell you that much. So these are the traditional things that you would not necessarily know about. On the way up to the campsite, we met a woman in her 70s who has never been to a doctor. A sweet woman living in a small cottage with no electricity so happy and loving and ready to share her knowledge. She reminds me of my grandmother as she taught us about some of the benefits of the plants that grow right in her front yard. Sister Nice is an older resident in Tango River. She grew up in this community. She utilized all these plants from her childhood days to rear her entire family by growing up on all these plants here. So she's very informative when it comes to all these plants here. Let me just get a few more of these plants so she can explain to you. This is one of the 
the number one medicine in the world. No, no. not ginger. This is turmeric. This is turmeric, folks. And this is sought of all over the world for medicinal purposes and also as uh, to color textile. Yeah, it's turmeric. And this is a natto that's called also be used as a medicinal plant, but also used as a meat seasoning and it can also be used as for lipstick. I call this the country woman lipstick because when you rub this up like this, it gives you a red color like this. It's not toxic and it's very tasty when you add this to your meat. Yes, or fish or any other, anything right. that you're cooking. And what you have here also are some mint. This is the mint that if you go to the store and you want some mint tea, this is the actual mint itself. So you can smell this. This. It smell very minty. Wow. So this is what you, this is, and there's quite a few different types of mint. So if you notice the color of this on my finger. We call it right. grass. Right. Now this plant here also is, uh, this is sugar cane. And this is why most people of African descent came to the New World, the Western world, to plant this plant, to grow sugar, to be shipped back to England. So this sugar cane. And there's different varieties of sugar cane. Now this is a fever grass. That's, yeah. This is a fever grass that Mama Nice is talking to you about. This is locally, this is internationally known as lemongrass lemon. that are used in various ointments and lotions, lotions and also and mosquito rep and repellent. This is used here to reduce fever. So that's why it's called fever grass in Jamaica. But it's just in this little yard here, the, it's the, the, the few plants that she have here that she use on, on a year to year basis. And this she have used to raise her children on all these plants. So she don't have to go to the store. Her store is right in her yard. And her doctor is right in her yard as well. So that's what makes this country unique. You can find so many things here. This thing, if your legs or your foot or anywhere is broken, you don't have to have a prosper, a plaster polish. Yeah. Don't care all this bone is splinter. Mm -hmm. You use this. Mm -hmm. With any, I feel it's olive water. oil, this yeah. is a yellow ginger. Yellow ginger. And you just get it. Who want that? <laughs> can I have this one? Of course, can I, have, I can have more. Oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. No, treat, uh, it's used locally to treat cold, you know, you know uh, congested, you know, to get rid of your cold. And also very tasty animal feed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very, yeah. Today was a special day. Being able to share some of the history of Jamaica and allowing the guests to get a better understanding of the amazing people and their rich heritage was something I knew could enhance their trip. So today what we're doing is really all about the guest and really about Richard. So it's really about Richard being able to share with him his passion, share with uh, the world uh, some of the amazing uh, fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, and allowing the guests to come up here to be able to heal. Yeah, well, I want to welcome you guys to Camp Millbrook. This campsite is approximately 300 and some odd acres. And so what we want to do here in conjunction with Charles and other potential investors is create a wellness retreat area for people like yourself to come back and enjoy some of this peace and tranquility and, uh, and have some entertainment at the same time. Uh, we hopefully will also be looking to invest our biotech center that we can utilize some of the medicinal plants that I've showed you earlier to make some uh, nutraceuticals or other medicines that can be used to prevent or even cure some of the common ailments that we suffer from on a daily basis. Um, again, welcome and as you walk around just try to relax and de-stress and don't think about the concrete jungle that you came from. Just try to enjoy this peace and serenity. I must say, I didn't know how Roger would make it. I had faith, but I was worried about him and his progress. He fought hard to be here today, and I could see the joys in his face. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this? 
It reminds me a lot of the mountains of Kentucky, <laughs> where my dad is from. Yeah, yeah. I have land like this, and rolling hills, and pastures cut out of the mountains. Yeah. Does it, does it give you peace? It does. It gives you peace. Yeah. A lot of peace, a lot of serenity. But when you think of, like, you know, when you get back, I mean, what? It's uh, going back. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's something to remember, though. It is. It is something to remember. It is really something. Life is 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 worth fighting for. I tell you that much. You know. Very few places you see that this this that this is this, that beautiful. Like this. You glad you glad you came now. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Coming up on reversed. So welcome to San Bartolo okay. Cave. You know, this, this truly is unbelievable. This truly is um, a dream come true for me. Richard was taking us to the caves to see how the Maroons fought for their land. The climb up was not easy, but worth every second. Basically, what we're going now, we're going into the mountains, and these are the original trails that the Maroons used to run off, off the plantation to hide from the English soldiers. Well, we just, all we did was just modify the trail a little bit. I want to show you a plant that was very helpful for me. Uh, I had a hypothyroid problem initially when I wanted to just act like a normal person. I was forget I was I just wanted to just leave sport. I just want to eat everything, drink everything. So I just gained a lot of weight, and um, uh, cholesterol went out of whack. Uh, my thyroid was almost dead. So we used this plant called gully beans, which is that tree there with that rock, the green round fruit on it. That's called gully beans. So I came to Jamaica and I had some lady cook that up with some virgin coconut oil. And what that does was stimulate the thyroid function. And I, start, and I lost at least 60 pounds in two months. And my thyroid function was restored. So these are the traditional things that you will not necessarily know about in the US, but if you live in this sort of environment, your, your relatives and will teach you all about these different type of ailments that you can use to solve your own problems. I tell you, being on thyroid medication is no joke. I did it once, I was like, forget about it. So we're gonna go to a cave. The cave that we're gonna go to is called Sandbottom Cave. And this is one of the hiding out caves that the Maroons use. So we're actually walking on sacred land here. Normally we have different birds here. We have a lot of endemic species of bird. We have one bird, the bird that you just heard that made all that noise. That's a parrot. That's a yellow-billed parrot. It's endangered. So I don't encourage any kind of bird shooting here because I love birds. So I want this era to get back to this full point where you can see birds flying all over the place. Usually, during the evening times, so you have a different set of birds and you also see a different set of birds in the morning time. So if you're a bird watcher, this is a place to be. Wow, look at that, look. You see it? Are we going there? Yeah. yeah. You see the mm -hmm. If you take a close look at all the rock formations here, you can see how similar it is to the rocks you'll find underneath the sea. Because like I said, rocks don't deteriorate from the side, they deteriorate from the top down. As you can see, the trees grown on top, so the root system will eat the calcium carbonate that's in these rocks here. So this is a perfect learning environment for geology, botany. You notice a lot of these plants you see, you'll even see a lot of these plants in the plant stores in the States. And also a perfect place to hike. You want into fitness and you want to hike and lose some weight, it's a place to be. So this is a perfect area in terms of, you know, you know, homing your fitness skills and trying to live healthy, you know? All you can hear are the birds. No cars, no sirens. 
Nothing. So we're gonna go up to this cave here. Uh, if you're out of breath, please uh, stop, get your respiration down, and continue. This is a very significant cave in the fight for emancipation. This is one of the caves that the Moons hid in to fight the English soldiers that were stationed here. And this is called Sand Bottom Cave. It's called Sand Bottom Cave because the white stuff at the bottom of the cave, the slaves thought it was sand, but it's actually calcium carbonate that falls off the roof of the cave and settles to the ground. In the Bible, there's a story. It's called Joseph Coat. This flower is called Joseph Coat. Uh, as, you wow. come, as you come in this area, you'll feel the air quality change because it's always very cool. We call this area our natural AC area. So as you come to where Charles is, you start feeling the cool air rushing out. But you'll see a nice area as you go on the top up here. You get a good view of what it looks like inside. Part of getting well is doing your physical activity. And this will be if you enjoy nature. It's an easily stroll, easily hike. Now, modern humans could have their exercise. So, welcome to Sand Bottom Cave. Now, this is where a lot of people hid. Like I said, to fight the English in a war for emancipation. This is one of approximately 30 or 40 caves that's in this area. Again, you have a lot of endemic plant species in here. You have a lot of endemic birds. And so we try to keep this area protected for our visitors to enjoy the natural waters that we have here. As an educational tool for our children and our friends, the pointer rocks hanging from the ceiling, those are called stalactite. And the ones that are grown from the ground up uh, are called stalagmite. All right. Each one of those stalactite that are hanging from the ceiling have a different sound pitch. So if you knock each and every one of them, they all have a different sound, almost like a xylophone. There's no snakes, there's no deadly animals or anything in this area. So you're free to go down at your own risk if you'd like. The guests didn't go as we didn't want to risk them getting getting hurt or injured. It's 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 steep and and cliffy and, and rocky. But uh, you know this this truly is unbelievable. This truly is um, a dream come true for me. That we were able to actually save and change lives here. Anyone that knows me knows I like goats. Getting away from the four walls many of us deal with every day can be life-saving. I wanted them to enjoy some rabbits, birds, fresh air, and landscapes. Rich's place is not only beautiful, it's historical. They didn't want to miss coming here. And today, we all grew that much closer. Coming up on Reversed. You know, once again, I think we are all proud of you. You've been my lifesaver. If I had a hat, I would take it off. I love you. I love you too. When we got home, we were all very tired. I thought a good way to end the night was to sit relax and talk with the therapist. It has truly been amazing the last couple of days. And, um, you know, once again, I think we are all proud of you. And, you know, one of the things that really intrigues me about this whole process is really, uh, I, I think, the psychological part. Really being able to work with, uh, from within. 
you know, I know Margie, sometimes I see you, you, you actually tell me that you are writing about this whole experience. Yes, I am. Exactly. Started a journal. Exactly. So when, we, when I look at that, that means you are truly reflecting. Jerome, I think you've, you know, seen some things here over the last couple of days that have truly uh, changed your life. I think that this kind of reinforces mm -hmm. what you already know. Roger, you have done, uh, you have jumped leaps and bounds. We're all, we're all proud of you and uh, as a person. Um, Lisa, you are glowing. You're yes. uh, a pinnacle of light for everyone in here. Yes. You know, I think we're all going to miss each other deeply. Well. One of the things that I wanted to do was kind of as we get close to the last, you know, day or two here at the house. Um, I wanted to bring in our favorite person so that she could <laughs> really, I know she's done some great one-on-ones with you and some great group therapies, but we wanted to do something a little bit different today and she'll tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. It's great having you in this session. It will be fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. What Charles just did, each of you will get a turn to do later. Right? It's all about positively reinforcing ourselves and each other. And from what I have learned so far in this program, you will have a chance to stay connected after you leave here. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tap into that and use it as best as you can to get as far as you can. Roger, are you comfortable where you're sitting? No, I'm not. All right, so I figure you might need to lean back a little. Roger, no. do you mind? Yeah, no, would you like to sit over here? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, great. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Oh, you did that masterfully. That's great. Now we are in the setting. I want each of you to tell your colleagues, your teammates, your friends now, one positive attribute you've witnessed about them. And Charles already did his at the beginning. So we're going to start with Lisa. Well, my dear. What I see is somebody who's not going to give up and has learned to deal with a situation that you are in temporarily. And Jerome, you've been my lifesaver. You were there, you've helped me realize some important steps in this process, which I get overwhelmed with. Roger, you came back to me. And you show me again that you care. So thank you. Margie. Um, Miss Lisa, my friend, my twin, I see in you action. You are speaking the words and you're doing the action right behind it. And for that, I am so proud of you. Jerome, <laughs> little box of surprises. Cause you can be so knowledgeable so understanding, but yet so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. You are an inspiration to all of us. Roger, if I had a hat, I will take it out. I notice the most change in you. You are such a sweet man. But the most, the thing that I, I, I love the most and, and I appreciate is the way that you are treating your partner in life and your wife. You are a, an inspiration to our group because you have done great leaps of improvement. And I am so glad to call you my friend. Thank yeah. you, Margie. You're welcome. Thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Lisa, I think that your determination um, to do whatever from day one when you got here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you allow yourself to say it's okay when you didn't before. Miss Marcy, you know what? Yes, sir. You've worked through any and everything from seeing you come in here and say, I can't eat greens. Yeah. And you did it. Yes, I did. You did it. You didn't let greens defeat you. That's right. Mr. Roger. <laughs> 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 you know, you were a quiet soul when you first got here. Mm -hmm. You were afraid. Yeah. 
You're not afraid anymore. You're not letting anything challenge you. You're our hero. Hmm. Because you, you, you went from letting things defeat you to saying, you know what, not anymore. That takes determination. I like to lose. <laughs> right. And you were persistent. You were very persistent. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Roger. Yeah, but back to Jerome. <laughs> you ought to be a comedian. <laughs> you, you, make, you make everyone laugh. And you made me laugh a lot. Even when I was feeling bad at being down, you still made me laugh. That's good stuff. That's good medicine. Yeah, yeah it is. It really helped. And Miss Marjorie. Yes, sir. You just inspiring to me. Just and little chit chats conversations about nothing. You still find something to inspire. That, that's helped me a lot. And finally, my lovely wife, Lisa. You're just an inspiration also. I cannot give up on. I love you. I love you too. Charles, this is great. Yeah. You've done a magnificent job. This is pivotal. Wouldn't you say this is pivotal? Mm. None of you here is the same. Mm. And in a great way, in a positive way, you have changed. I'm no doctor, but I knew in my hearts of hearts what many need is someone that cares. We all crave something or someone to take some time with us. Inspiration goes a long way and can give hope to the hopeless. Everyone in this house has been touched and we're all looking inside ourselves. Hope is the best of things and hope is what keeps us alive. This is the true meaning of reversed. In the next episode, of reversed. I want for you guys to have the healthiest, not just sex life, but the healthiest marriage. And I probably would just rip all these buttons off. Why? Because it's defeating me. Make us proud, okay? You will. <laughs>